Um, yeah, welcome everybody. Thanks for the introduction. My name is uh, Fabian Wüllhorst. I'm from the Institute for Energy Efficient Buildings and Indoor Climate from the RWTH Aachen. And today I'm going to present to you um, the model implementation for heat pump and chiller devices on the system um, level. Why uh, did we implement uh, a model? Um, well, heat pumps and chillers are key to achieve the climate goals. And uh, the efficiency of both devices mainly depends on the device interaction with the energy system itself. We can see this if we analyze the Cano efficiency of heat pump and chillers. And we see that temperature levels in the energy system um, mainly influence the efficiency. And for example, that if we can decrease the sink temperature and a heat pump, we can drastically increase the um, coefficient of performance. And as this interaction is so important, we have to better understand this interaction and optimize it, for example, by design optimization or control design optimizations. And to do this, we need modeling approaches. And on this system level, already various open source approaches exist. However, these existing approaches are not modular and they are not reversible. And mostly they do not regard any safety controls. First, I want to answer the question how one model for a heat pump and a chiller can even be modular and reversible. And to answer this question, I want to show the working principle of first a heat pump um, applied, for example, in a building. And uh, in a building, we use different source fluids, for example, air, brine, or water to evaporate um, a refrigerant, then compress it in a compressor, and then condense it again to supply heat to the building, either through air or water. The nice thing about a heat pump is that we can use a four-way reversing valve displayed here and just change the operation from a heat pump to a chiller operation. And in the summer, extract air from the building and supply it to the ambient. By looking at this diagram, we can clearly see that both heat pump and chillers use the same source and sink fluids. So it can be modeled in a kind of modular way and that both are based on the same vapor compression cycle. So uh, it can also um, be modeled as a reversible model by implementing the four-way reversing valve. Now that I answered this questions um, that one model can be modular and reversible, I want to explain to you the modeling approach behind our model. Um, we implemented the vapor compression cycle as a black box approach in order to ensure a modular a model because the vapor compression cycle itself depends again on the device. There are different configurations. And um, to, in order to be able to uh, simulate a modular model, uh, we um, selected a black box approach, which I will highlight in the following. Afterwards, I will explain the implementation of safety controls, then go into the validation of uh, two different black box approach approaches. And lastly, um, display the application in a couple building energy simulation. So in this system level that we um, try to model. Um, first, let's uh, go into detail on the modeling approach. Um, as I've explained, uh, we followed a black box approach for the vapor compression cycle itself. And looking at literature models, um, all literature models have the same three output values of the vapor compression cycle, the electrical power consumption, the condenser heat flow, and the evaporator heat flow. And as all models, have these uh, three same output values, we de decided to implement a modular black box based on an expandable bus connector. And using this expandable bus connector, we can use any state um, from the actual device level, for example, inflow and outflow temperatures to estimate these three values. We already implemented three public um, uh, yeah, available um, choices for black box models. First, um, based on a two-dimensional data table based on the European standard 14.5.1.1, which manufacturers have to supply when they want to sell a heat pump or a chiller. And then based on stationary compressor cycle simulations in Python. And lastly, on functional approaches, for example, for um, a Cano efficiency uh, function um, as, as already implemented in the IBIPSA uh, library. Um, now that I've explained the black box approach, how do we integrate this black box approach into a device model? Um, we aggregate the different options in uh, so-called replaceable models in um, a inner cycle model, so a vapor compression cycle model, and we implement 
a one black box model for the chilling operation and one black box model for the heating operation. Then by using a Boolean um, mode um, called variable, we can switch between the black box for chilling operation and the black box for heating operation and thus implement a reversible machine. This model is then used in the actual device model, which we call partial reversible vapor compression machine. And by extending this partial model, we can um, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, get the heat pump and the chiller model by specifying if the device is mainly used for heating or by, uh, for cooling um, applications. On this um, machine level, we implemented further gray box modeling options, so some physical, physical um, additions to the black box approach. Um, first, we added inertia so by using a critical damper model of the core li or standard library in Modelica. Um, by adding the inertia from refrigerant and uh, inner components, for example, the compressor, to the uh, heat flows which go into the condenser and the evaporator. Second, we implemented heat losses to the ambient to accurately um, describe the dynamics on the condenser and evaporator side. Um, these two model options are optional, however, so the user of the model can actually decide on the modeling depth he wants to use when simulating the model. Now that, now that I've um, yeah, explained how the um, physical implement, uh, implementation of the uh, model works, I want to um, go into further detail on how do we do control the device. Um, yeah, to uh, to um, highlight the control of the device, especially in the energy system, is very important. Um, so let's look at it. Um, normally, for a heat pump and chillers, we would um, apply some kind of set point control. For a heat pump, for example, we would based on the outdoor air temperature, use a heating curve to calculate the set point temperature. But before we can feed this set point into the actual controller, for example, a PI controller, and try to um, yeah, get the actual uh, or, or set point temperature to uh, be the actual um, temperature of the device, um, we have to think about the first safety control, which is the thermal disinfection of Legionella. This only applies for heat pump applications where we want to supply domestic hot water. But if we want to do this, we have to regularly increase the domestic hot water temperature above 60 degrees Celsius to thermally disinfect uh, the Legionella. Then if we want to, uh, or if we calculate in the control, the um, relative compressor frequency and the heating or cooling mode of the device, we can't directly feed it into the device model, which I've just explained, but before we have to um, apply a safety control. This is equal to the local controller of the device, and uh, in reality, it would be some um, mix of electrical and actual mechanical um, components, such as thermistors and pressostats. The first control is the defrost control. This is applicable for air source devices, and the evaporator, in case of Frost accumulation has to be defrosted either using reverse cycle defrost or external heater and defrost regularly in the winter period. Then we have to ensure that a maximum number of starts per hour, a minimal runtime, and a minimal lock time, so after the device turns off, um, is ensured um, to ensure a safe operation of the oil in, in the refrigeration cycle. Um, a third option is the operational envelope of the compressor. This is actually realized in real devices by pressostats and thermistors and ensures that the maximum pressures and temperatures um, are not, not exceeded. Lastly, we uh, implemented a model to um, uh, prevent freezing. This is apl applicable for water or brine source devices and ensures that the minimal temperature of, for example, for water source heat pumps of zero degrees Celsius is not violated, which in Modelica would result in a simulation error and in reality would result in broken devices. These safety controllers are, again, as the modeling options, inertia and heat losses, optional, so you don't have to use it, but we highly encourage um, to do so because it realistically um, simulates the reality. Now that I've um, shown the uh, physical implementation and the control of the device, I want to highlight the validation of the model. To validate our approach, we, we um, conducted experiments 
uh, on a water-to-water -water heat pump um, as an on-off device um, at our local test bench. And we measured some different inflow temperatures of the water source and um, condenser outflow temperatures. And um, as shown here, different um, uh, compressor powers depending on the um, internal um, compression uh, ratios. We then calibrated um, the model according to this data for two different black box modeling options. First, a table-based approach in the European standard. It is worth highlighting that this table based on the manufacturer data only had four points, so really sparse, di sparse data. And second, the canoe approach from the ABIPSA, so um, an ideal um, heat pump. We validated um, the model um, calibration, the first phase in the last 30 minutes of the experiment, and calibrated according to a normalized root mean square error for electrical power consumption and condenser outflow temperature. Looking at the results, we now see here as a, um, yeah, a not dotted line, the condenser outflow temperature, and again, the um, power consumption of the device. And we see um, a, a really good fit for the table and canoe based approach in the temperature approximation. So the model, both model approaches are able to represent the dynamic um, behavior of the temperature. Um, but for the um, power consumption of the device, we see um, big deviations. First, um, the table based approach um, has some uh, deviations from the actual uh, device, but uh, the canoe based approach shows bigger deviations as the assumption is a constant electricity consumption regardless of the state. We see this also in the normalized root mean square error values. So the table based approach is a little bit um, more accurate. However, you have to uh, have the table in the first end and the canoe based approach maybe is uh, good if we want to simulate new devices as it's based on physical principles. Um, now that we've validated uh, two different model approaches, we um, applied the model also in a coupled building energy simulation. And to do so, um, we coupled it with a high order model from the XLIP library, which is the library this model is also implemented in. We simulated an air to water heat pump over the course of one heating period uh, with a constant set point of 55 degrees set point, uh, Celsius. Sorry, not a constant set point, but applying a heating curve. Uh, with a two Kelvin bandwidth hysteresis. We then varied different modeling options. As I've explained, the model um, can be, uh, yeah, not, not each um, option has to be used. And we analyzed these different uh, options um, for the uh, seasonal coefficient of performance of the heat pump and the computation time. First, we compared the uh, black box approach. So no inertias and no heat losses and no safety controls with the gray box approach where we regard the inertias and the heat losses. We see that the heat losses um, yield a little bit lower um, seasonal coefficient of performance and that the overall computation time increases by two um, up to three hours. To distinguish um, what influences this, we then uh, first added the safety controls and we see that the safety controls do not add a lot to the simulation time so they can easily be used and to distinguish the influence of inertia and heat losses, we um, disabled one after another. And we can clearly see that the heat losses don't have such a big impact on the simulation time when compared to the inertia. So even though the inertia is really good to um, add the dynamics as seen in the, um, in the validation phase to the model, uh, it should uh, closely be um, checked if, uh, if the inertia um, yeah, increases the computation time by a factor um, of, of 20%. Then lastly, we also uh, simulated reverse cycle defrost. And we can see that this, um, again, increases the computation time a little bit, but more notably um, decreases the seasonal coefficient of performance drastically, as is um, uh, to be expected in real devices um, if we only look at the heating period of the device. To conclude, we um, implemented a modular model for heat pump and chillers. We validated this model um, with different modeling approaches and implemented this model into the AXLIP, which is developed at our institute. For further, re uh, further research, we want to implement further uh, black box options, um, validate also chiller applications. So at our institute, we are focused mainly on heat pumps, but 
we also want to um, validate the chiller options. And lastly, I want to check if the integration in, into other libraries, for example, the Abipsa core library is applicable. Uh, thanks for your attention and I'm happy to discuss any questions you have.